the friends. Long time no see. Um, it has been a time. Um, I've been sick. So I took a, a break from everything in September so I could go to Chicago and get a ride there. So, you know, it'd be cool. Live a little. Since I, I have it in a while. Um, I got a sinus cold when I got back. It wasn't COVID. I got a sinus cold. Always happens when I go somewhere for three days or more and get sick. So I got sick. Um, that and being on an airplane um, gave me fluid in my ears and I got vertigo. So I've had vertigo for the past, like, two months. So it's been a fun time. So um, everything's been delayed, including this, because I've been trying to work and uh, get my damn life together. So sorry for the delay. Um, even more of a delay. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably know this. My oven broke. So the oven broke, and that was all fine and dandy. And then the eyes broke when I tried to replace the oven. Uh, I have someone coming to look at it tomorrow. So uh, I've got some. I have an air fryer. I have a toaster oven. So. Um, we're gonna make stuff. So, um, we're gonna make meatloaf and potatoes. I'm gonna make potatoes in the air fryer and I'm gonna make meatloaf in my tiny little toaster oven. It is a black and decker toaster oven. I got it on sale at Target for $30. So, I was thinking about getting one anyway because I have the one stove and I can only make so much in a stove. And toaster ovens work kind of the same. So, it just seemed logical. Logical. I still can't fucking talk. Uh, my brain's here though. So, but while we do this, we're going to talk about the unexplained murder of Debbie Wolf. So, this one bothers me. Um, and th the reason I found this one is because me and my friend, me and my bestie, a couple years ago, went on a trip to North Carolina. So, we're both true crime people. We like ghosts. We want to do weird shit. Um, so, I looked up murders in the area to see what had happened because it was around. Um, Fort Bragg and whatnot, and I found this one, and I was like, why do I know this one? It's because it was on Unsolved Mysteries. So, it's bothered me since then, because I'm like, it doesn't make sense, and you're going to understand why. So, this is the mysterious death of her. I've had this post written since April 30th. April 30th. I, at one point, I had a whole bunch of posts, and then life happens. So, here we fucking go. Um, so, Debbie Ann Wolf was born June 19th, 1957. She's a Gemini like myself. I was born the 17th. I was actually going to do this one around my birthday because we were, our birthdays were so close together and make a cake, and it was so hot that I thought I was going to die. Like, I made a birthday cake because I wanted a, a vegan birthday cake. And, oh my, I thought I was going to die. It was so hot. So, she was originally from Arkansas. Um, I couldn't find where her fa why her family moved to North Carolina, but they did. The whole family moved. Um, and she had been in and, she had been out of nursing school for two years and was currently working at the Fayetteville Veterans Administrative Medical Center. So, um, I also thought about doing this one around Christmas because last time she was seen was the December 26th, uh, yeah, the day after Christmas at about 4 p.m. So, after leaving work, it was assumed she headed home, um, and when she failed to show up for her shift, the following day her co-workers got concerned, as you do. Especially if you're someone who this isn't like. You always show up for work, you're very dependable. Um, and they were unable to reach her by phone, and they called her mother, you know, emergency. This is why you have emergency contacts at work, friends. This is why it's important to have one. And then her mother and friends tried to find her. So, finally, they got someone to drive her to the hospital. I'm going to get into the weird stuff in a moment, but let's start with meatloaf. So I have a Subaru bowl. I'm going to move my very, my Apple laptop that I just paid off. So, it's a lot, but you know, what have you. So I'm using um, butter ball because I mean, it's just good. Um, I don't eat red meat or pork. I'm sure I've said that before. Um, it just it makes me sick. It just does. It just got to the point where I can't, I can't my, my body can't process it. So I use um, turkey burger, poultry. Um, I dabble in vegan. I do, but um, where I have gastritis, some vegan foods flared up. So it's, 
I haven't kept poultry out yet because of that. That dead one broke. So let's wash these off. This is salmonella. So I've got a pound of Jiggy Burger in there. I've already washed my hands before this, as always. Um, I'm gonna use. Uh, so this one, I've looked up a couple recipes online, and none of them. I've just kind of taken bits and pieces from things that I think would taste better because like a lot of them called for Worcestershire, whatever the fuck sauce. The thing none of us can say. So it calls for a cup. I have these fancy cups that I rarely ever get to use. These are Chrissy Teigen and I like them. Um, I had to order like four sets of them because they kept showing up broken. So we're going to use a cup of breadcrumbs. I just have the food club ones from our local grocery store. Um, and then ketchup. Ketchup. I wonder if I can move this down. Probably not. This I need to find a better system. You think I'd have done that? It's like a half cup ketchup. I eyeballed it. Because and a little Dijon mustard. A little mustard, and I like Dijon better than anything. Um, so I'm gonna put some of that in there. Um, I only use, I don't care for mustard um, at all, but I use the Dijon mustard to make a Greek dressing that's really good, um, which I made a video of, and I don't think I ever posted. So I'll do that. See, um, friends, I don't recommend vertigo, but you can avoid it. You can avoid it by all means. Um, so I'm going to put some, just some pepper. We're, uh, again, we're just eyeballing it. Because all like the random seasonings, you know, the normal seasonings, you have to eyeball. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. A little salt because we don't want it too over salty. And then I'm going to use garlic powder. Again, we're just eyeballing it. This is all about one fourth tablespoon a piece. But again, um, go based on your desired what the hell ever you feel like. Um, because ultimately, it's what it's what you like. See it? It just is. So, um, I was looking up a recipe to see. I'm gonna mix this. I'm gonna mix this, and I have a use this to do it with. Um, so, you think I'd have looked up what to bake it on, but my brain's still not all there. It's just not. Three seventy-five. Oh, I still need an egg for about 45 minutes. So, I need an egg. Can I go open on your kitchen floor? <laughs> okay, so we have an egg. I'm gonna mix this up. So, and then we're gonna put it in a loaf pan, which I've got to get some olive oil. So Reese. Research. Um, I am gonna preheat this mini tiny BB oven though. Do, 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 do. I'll show you guys this oven. Rather adorable. It's like we put all my spices up there <laughs> so I could get to them um, and not have any issues. Issues. Okay. So, we're going to mix this up while I tell you some more about Debbie. Because this is supposed to take like an hour. So, we know that she went missing on December 26th. December 26th. I'm probably going to use my hands to mix this. Um, so, they had to call her mom to say, hey, um, 
they probably didn't show up for work, which I imagine as a parent is the scariest phone call to get. Um, just for anybody. If somebody calls you and you're their emergency contact, they say, oh, hey, by the way, this person didn't show up for work today. Of course, you're going into fight or flight mode. You're like, what? Well, why? So, panic insured as it goes. So, there's a lot of details on this, and I've sat and, and researched this. Like, I've even tried to Google Maps this just so I could kind of find it. I can't find this place, this cabin she lives in, in uh, Fayetteville, anywhere. I can't. I just can't. Um, so, they've either tore it down or, or whatever. So, um, oh, and there's some resources that I've put in here because there's a doctor that has also um, looked into this case. So, significant amount. Um, and has done some very wonderful research on it. I'm probably going to put some more ketchup in this. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So, they, um, they called her mother, Jenny Edwards, and her and a friend, Kevin Gordon, went to Debbie's house. Like I said, it's a cabin that's just off in the woods. Um, her car was parked in a different spot than normal, and the driver's side... Um, was pushed up pretty far. So these are things that were weird about the property. Just weird. Um, which, I mean, if you if you live by yourself, of course you can park wherever the hell you want. But then also, like, you, if you're a creature of habit like most of us, ma'am, is this your meatloaf? Then no. Get away. Um... Go get dogs. I'm kidding. I love them. Just She's tall enough to try to stick her nose up here. And that's unsanitary. She knows better. Right, Lemma? So, when they got to the property, they did notice some things. So, her car was parked in an unusual spot. And the driver's seat was pushed way back too far. So, if you're a short person like myself, and you've ever dated a tall person like myself... Not myself, but I've dated a tall person. Um, you know anytime they drive your car, they push the seat back real far? And then when you get in the car, you have to pull it up? Because you can't touch the pedals? This is what this car was doing. It was way pushed back all the way, like some giant person was in the seat. And drove it. Like, why would she push her car, her seat back that far? Unless, you know, you're looking for something under the seat and just don't feel like pushing it back up. Um, you know, the usual. Um, and there were a lot of empty beer cans lying around her yard. And Debbie was very organized. Like, she liked to have everything clean, as you should. As a homeowner, you should like to have your house contained in a way that, you know, is beneficial to you. And it was also a brand of beer that she didn't even drink. Um, there... She liked to keep things tidy and organized. It was not. She had two dogs. Um, Mason and Morgan. And I'm reading this because I'm an adult and have a short attention span. And I want to make sure I get the details right. Um, and her dogs were always taken care of. And she would have chained them up when she was gone. And they were just running around. So she wasn't there. Nowhere to be found. And her dogs are just running around all crazy like. You know what dogs do. So I think I've got this mixed up. It smells delicious. Um, I'm going to put some more just little dry ingredients in it. Just just because. Because I can. I might have put more salt in it. But I'm going to put a little bit more garlic powder. And some of that in it. So. Chill. So, inside of her home, it was in a disarray. And as I've already stated, she was a very tidy person. Liked to have everything organized, well kept. Which, as you do when you own a home, you want your you want to be comfortable, but you also don't want it to be chaos. Because your brain, if it's chaos, then it's like, you know, you got to feel me on this. Um, so she, there was a uniform lying on her kitchen floor, which wasn't even the uniform she had on the day before. Um, so this one was a short-sleeved one, and one of the co-workers, when they interviewed them, said, no, she had a long-sleeved one on, 
and because they spilt coffee on her sleeve. So she would have had a coffee stain on her white uniform. Um, and this one didn't have a stain on it. So even if she was wearing like a long sleeve underneath it, plus it was December 26th and North Carolina is cold in December. I'm in Virginia, which is, I'm five hours away from here and it's freezing right now. Um, so, already weird stuff. Already weird stuff. Her purse um, was in a difficult to reach place under her bed, which was a water bed. Um, and if you've ever, <laughs> oh, sorry, I sneezed in that direction and I didn't sneeze in my hand. It's my kitchen though, so it's fun. Um, it was, she had, she had a water bed. So if you've ever looked at a water bed, especially in what just happened in the, in 85. So if you've ever looked at a water bed from that time, they're boxed in because they have to have something to kind of support the water. You know, the, the mattress of the water. Um, and this, you can't really fit anything under there unless it's the very back of it. At least the one my uncle had, you couldn't. Because I tried to crawl under that thing. Could not do it. Um, so I don't know if it was any any different. Um, so I think I've got this mixed up pretty well. Let's pop it in here. One, two, three, six. What am I doing today? I'm telling you, I'm getting over the vertigo, but it's still kind of there. So I'm just going to reset my fingers. Very clean. Okay. Everything's going to be fine, as I've been telling myself for the past two months. I thought I had things figured out. So, I've got napkins. Napkins. It's a fast food napkin, because... Well, I just throw them away if they're perfectly fine. So, we're going to dump this in here. Ooh. You can also stick cheese in this bad boy. If that's your kind of thing. I'm not going to because I feel like that's too much. I don't know why I put the ketchup up. I don't to eat ketchup. So, we're going to shove it in this loaf pan. Stick it in there. Ooh. That's what you should do if you touch any type of raw meat, poultry, any sort raw thing here. I feel like even after sushi, I don't like sushi though, so it doesn't really. But we're, we're sanitary people here, sanitary people. So. Okay, so I've got it in there. It's a loaf of seasoned breadcrumbed meat, sausage, turkey. So, I'm gonna pop this sucker in again. In my tiny little oven. Makes me feel like I have an easy bake oven, except that it's has coils and not a light bulb. I just threw away my easy bake oven, actually. I found it when I'm cleaning. I've been also cleaning my basement, which has uh, 40 years of my parents' bullshit in it. So I found my easy bake oven. Didn't have to look pretty. So um, we cook this for 45 minutes at 375. So do, 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 375. We have 30 minutes on this thing. So we're going to put it in for 30 minutes. And then we're going to check it. See where it's at. But it's just tiny enough. And I'm going to show you. This oven is just perfectly enough to fit in there. You see that? Tiny. So we're going to put that in there. Don't start. Rude. talk a little bit more about Debbie and then before we get with this I had to adjust it I'm sorry um I also just used a uh, great value ketchup from Walmart because we eat on a budget um ketchup's not that expensive but it doesn't matter it all tastes the same at least I think it does if it doesn't to you you can grab the ketchup you want I don't care so some other weird things about Debbie Miss Debbie who by the way let me show you a picture of Debbie Wolf 
What a babe. Just what a beautiful creature. Like just, and this is actually on the Unsolved Mysteries wiki. I'm gonna make it bigger though. Which I think I also used as a reference. I've had this laptop a year, you think I'd know how to use it, right? Absolutely do not. Oh my gosh, that is big. Go away. I do not care about whatever fan lab is. I do not want to join it. Right, anyways. Um, are you going to work? I've, I've broken it. Why are ads popping up? You know what? Screw this. I'll show you on the web page. I showed you I'll show you on Google. So here, Debbie. Very pretty. Very pretty woman. Um this is actually her cabin right here on this one. Look at because I like visual aids, I'm sure there's a lot of people do. I'll probably do this better because there's a glare. Look at that. There's her cabin. This is apparently a crime scene photo of her foot. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Um, and this is apparently the... We're going to get to it. I'm, I'm jumping ahead, friends. Jumping ahead. Okay, so they're in her house. And they found, like, her house is in disarray. They found that her purse has been shoved under the bed in a hard-to-reach spot under a waterbed waterbeds friends waterbeds they're good in theory but in practice maybe not so much so debbie's answering machine um was blinking with unheard messages um one specific voicemail was a male stating that he was concerned and hoping she wouldn't miss any more days of work well she was at work the day before so um this voicemail was suggesting that she had missed several days when this was the first day she was missing, this very first day that they showed up at the house. And they were able to verify that with her job. They're like, hey, we just met her yesterday. Um, the message was not from an actual coworker or an employee. They were able to verify that. No one owned up to it, at least. Um, also, the timing of this voicemail was strange since it was left at the time she should have been well into her scheduled shift for a few hours. Um, and it didn't make sense that they would have called be way before this point. So let's say if your shift's at like 8 a.m. This one was left in the middle of the day. So this, why would they call in the middle of the day if they've already called, didn't get her, couldn't get her anywhere else, and had called her mother. So, and if you listen to the voicemail, um, which I have linked in my post here, um, from Dr. Godwin Sott, it's really creepy. Like, it sounds like it's staged. So... They did call the police, but they told them that they couldn't do anything because if you're over the age of 18, you have to be missing for 72 hours. So this was basically the police could care less unless you're missing for 72 hours as an adult, which I understand because some people just walk off. You know, if you have the luxury of doing that, by all means, teach me how. So... The um, sheriff's office didn't actually begin investigating this until December 31st, and they. Okay, so, um, I'm trying to get the this to cook, and I got cut off. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about Debbie. So, since it, she's an adult. I'm making, I'm cutting those potatoes too in the air fryer. Um, since she was an adult, they had to wait 72 hours. So. The official look for her, she was missing from the 26th to the 31st. Um, didn't start, they brought the brother hounds out on December 31st and didn't find anything. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And these are fingerling potatoes. They're a mix of uh, whatever. I don't know. I got them from the spit market. Um, I need to cook them before they go bad. So. Um, on New Year's Day, 1986, um, her mother had two diapers. 
two divers. Um, Kevin Gordon, who you may remember from, he came and helped look for her with his, her mother. And Gordon Childress searched the pond. Within just a few minutes, Gordon, the second one, the one who didn't show up to the house with her mother, found um, two sets of footprints and drag marks at the bottom. And he followed them until he came across Debbie's body. Um, and it appeared it had been stuck in a burn barrel. And the police were not involved in this search and were called when they found the body. So, this is the pond outside her house. And this is supposed to be her foot that they found. So, they called the police when they found the body. I jumped ahead. I should have waited for pictures. I'm, I'm antsy sometimes. Just kind of antsy. Okay. So. Um, and then on January 2nd, we're in not, she disappeared in um, December 26th of 1985. And they found her January 2nd of 1986. Um, Dr. Oliver from the North Carolina Medical Examiner's Office did the autopsy and he stated that the manner of death was reported as undetermined. Mainly because he couldn't determine if it, the drowning was accidental or a homicide. Think about that for a minute. So this lady, this woman, this woman, who was, what, 28? I don't even know. She was born in 57. Man, I did not major in math in college. So, 1985 minus 1957. Lord help us all. She's 28. She was 28. I was right. I don't know what question I filled. I'm right. I know I'm right. So, I'm going to finish cutting these potatoes right quick so I can get these going. Because if you can hear the timer on my little oven here, um, I just, I'm afraid it's not cooking. I think it is cooking. Um, I turned it up some because it cut off. I've never, this is the longest, this is the biggest thing I've cooked in this oven, other than like chicken nuggets. <laughs> fish sticks. I don't even eat fish. My roommate made fish sticks. <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah. It's an experiment. So, we're trying to um, adapt without having a full size oven. Or eyes. Or stovepipe. So. I'm not a rapper, I'm an adapter. Heard me. I didn't put down a cutting board either. What is wrong with me today? I'm just all over the place. Damn, I might not even make all these potatoes. I might lose a couple. Just because we've got lots of potatoes here. Hold on. Maybe I'll cook them and buy more potatoes. These have been in there a minute. Okay, they've been there a couple weeks. You know, potatoes grow eyes after a couple weeks. You know, potato things. I would grow eyes if I was a potato. I identify as a potato sometimes, and I have eyes. But I only have two sets of eyes. Okay, I have four eyes. At least I don't have 20 eyes in my head. Maybe one day I turn into a misfit thing. size bowl of spoons. Let's see what she would do. Um, oil everywhere. Um, and this, I bought this on a whim. This is roasted garlic and herb seasoning. So I'm going to put that on there. 
because I don't want to. I don't want to, because I sat here and I was like, what tree tops do I want this to be? But hold on, let's see what the colors are doing for sure. Like you can use whatever seasonings you kind of want for them. But I don't want it to like over, I want something to go with the tree bark. So I don't want it to be too much. Um, plus these are going to be good to where if you could put butter on them as well. So, to make sure. Oopsie. Oopsie, oopsie. Gross. Nice coating on there. Yeah. I have to wash my hands. Okay. Listen, I know it's a cop out move just to use garlic and herb seasoning, which is for meat. But I'm going to use oil for everything else you can use. So I'm going to clean my air fryer. Let's make sure you put it back every day. So I'm going to dump these in there. Dump them in there. Get down my potato. I got delicious potatoes. It's not even on. Anyways, hopefully, my air fryer is good. So I'll need it for 400 for 15 minutes. Um, I usually have 13 and a half minutes. Shake it up, baby. So, back and forth. It's still got like 10 minutes. But, I think it's going to be just fine. It's not going to smell great. But, it's going to be okay. That's the point. So, you know, still got like 10 minutes. Talk about some things from Deb, Debbie, Deborah, Debbie. Um, all talking. So, the cause of death was determined to be drowning, even though her body didn't have any characteristic for drowning. Um, there were multiple abrasions on several of her fingers, which could have been considered to death wounds. It is reasonable to conclude that in a typical drowning situation, the deceased eyes and mouth are open along with their hands and claw positions um, as though they're trying to fight for their life. However, Debbie's eyes and mouth were closed and her body appeared to be in a relaxed state. I should have given a warning that we're going to get into some graphic details. I'm sorry for that. Um, so typical drowning cases, uh, they would find a white froth or foam-like substance in the airways or excluding from their mouths or nostrils. There are none of the smells. So after, also it was present, it would indicate that the person was alive at the time they went into the water. So there was only a half a teaspoon of water found in her upper, her upper bronchial, can't talk, upper bronchial area. Um, the body appeared to be clean despite the dirtiness of the pond and no alcohol and drug were found in her system. Um, Dr. Godwin found some found something from the case file that suggested that there was semen present in the victim, which which wouldn't that make sense that it could have been rape or at least she had been with her boyfriend recently or something before the death. Uh, but the day, day, DNA profile wasn't available at the time, so it could have been why this was never checked. But I, that's a weird thing to find randomly. Um, but I put that detail in there because I was. After when I researched it, I was like, why have I not found that anywhere else? That's so weird. So, the police came to the conclusion that Debbie had just died from accidentally falling into the pond while playing with her dogs. There are some issues about this, and I know what you're thinking if I look one out. So, there are issues though. If she was playing with her dogs, um, with okay, so there are some issues with that. Um, if you own a dog, you know, if you're ever in distress or something. What, what happens to you, okay? And I would think that her dogs would try to leave her would leave the matter to her um, when she was there. I don't know. I don't know her dogs. They could, they could be different. Um, she was found in a barrel, so why would she have climbed into a barrel and rolled herself into a pond? And there were two sets of footprints and drag marks. So, 
where did this come from if she was alone? If she did this all by herself, where did the second foot prints come from? Um, Debbie's body was found about 30 feet from the bank in five and a half feet of water. She was 5'3", so she would have had to have been tall enough to tilt her head back to get out, to get back out of the water. She was 5'3", and it's five and a half feet. So to get the barrel all the way there, she had to to do that. Um, and afterwards, a family friend who had gone to the cabin to feed the dogs found her wool stocking cap in in the mud at the opposite end of the pond from where the location where they thought she had entered the water. Since there was a thin layer of ice on the pond, it's unlikely that the cap would have floated to the other side. So this was after somebody had went to go feed the dogs after. Um, so there's some controversy with this barrel um, and it makes me curious. So um, the investigators claimed that there was no such barrel at all, even though there was a deputy who stated he did see the barrel and they stated that Kevin and Gordon had seen was the jacket she was wearing ballooned from being in the water. So the jacket had filled up with water and kind of ballooned out. Um, since the barrel wasn't collected when the police came for the body, by the next day the barrel vanished. Just a oh my god. This is just last year, sorry. So, um, my iPad keeps saying it's full storage, but I don't have anything in it for my iPad. So, here we are. It's fine. Um, so the barrel's missing. This, um, was a barrel that she had used in her yard for firewood target practice um, there were still some indentions in it from where it was left on from where it was left on honestly it's like why do I bother um my iPad just decided to stop so I'm switched to my phone and that's why it looks like this um I'm gonna fix that though so just finishing up some things on Debbie here um usually in deaths that the medical examiner can't determine how the death happened or if there's anything suspicious surrounding the death, this means that they investigated as a murder until proven otherwise. However, this one wasn't, which is strange. It's like someone is purposely covering it up, which I don't, I don't like at all. Um, so, a couple months later, her mother was given the clothes that she was wearing when she was found, which is weird. So, um, brown corduroy pants that were too big and too long, and they were unzipped. A bra that was three sizes too big. Debbie was found wearing a 38C and Debbie wore a 34B. As a person who wears a bra, I can verify that how difficult it is to wear a bra that's too big. It's pointless. Um, and I've seen girls wear smaller ones to try to hide the fact. Um, to hide their boobs, but never one that's overly big. Because it just doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Like, you can wear a smaller one, and in theory, it will work. It's just a little uncomfortable. But to wear a bigger one, it's like you can tell. Um, and it's not comfortable. So, the Nike shoes that she was wearing were said to be three sizes too large and were men's shoes. She was found wearing a men's size 6. Debbie was a lady 7. A men's six is a woman's 7.5, a seven and a half. I looked this up. Um, so it was a half size bigger than what she wore, which would have been hard to wear because your feet would slide around. Um, but it's not anything too crazy. Also, the shoes had no mud on them when they found her. Um, they were cleaned when they were taken off her body. Um, it is weird. So, um, the shoes had no mud on them, and they were cleaned when they took them off her body. So, she had on a regular army field jacket that didn't belong to her or anyone associated with her. And the jacket had no name tag, and there was no way to trace it to the original owner. Um, and also, she was wearing a black Pittsburgh Steelers t-shirt, which her family and her boyfriend had never seen. Um, so, it's, it's almost like someone dressed her in clothes and then just shoved her in the it's I don't know it's strange so there are some suspects there are some suspects um there are only really two who were volunteers at the hospital 
um, that Debbie, Debbie was in charge of anyone who had volunteered with hospital. So the first one, there was a particular one that bothered her. He had a history of psychiatric illness and would often ask her to go out with him. Um, she would always politely turn him down. However, he did somehow get her home phone number and began calling her. And he even claimed to know where she lived and had threatened to come see her. After her body was found, he was questioned by police, but he had an alibi and refused to take a polygraph, as they do. Um, and he left the state a few days later, which is suspicious. Especially since, if you remember back, somebody left a strange voicemail on her phone. Um, the second volunteer was... This one tried to become romantically involved with Debbie in the weeks prior to her disappearance. However, she told her... told him... She just wanted to be friends, which is fine. We have that right as women. Men have that right as well. Um, if you, you're not interested in somebody, you have every right to say, hey, listen, we can be friends. I don't, I don't want to do this. And that's fine. Um, and her mother believed that he was a, a suspicious caller on the voicemail. He's also questioned by police, but then they never found any evidence. Of course they didn't. Um, it could have been a co-worker or maybe someone random who followed her home. I mean, she's a pretty girl. Maybe she stopped for gas. I was like, ooh, I'm going to follow her home on this road. Because she did live pretty far off. Um, and then the final suspect, I think, is someone in the police department. Knew something and was helping cover it up. Because there's so many suspicious circumstances that they don't, just don't add up. Um, and there was a theory, since they didn't really seem like to investigate it, and just wrote it off. Which... With all the weird things about this case, I don't know why anybody would unless they were trying to cover it up. It doesn't make sense to me why they wouldn't fully investigate this unless someone was trying to cover it up. I don't know. So, what do I think happened? Um, I think Debbie arrived home. Someone was waiting for her. They were outside drinking beer, and she asked them to leave. They attacked her. Um, this could explain why her car was in a different spot. This theory doesn't explain why this... The seat was pushed all the way back, unless they did that to move it, and then just didn't realize that maybe she would pulled in, or maybe they were parked in her usual spot, and she pulled it in, and they thought, well, let me move it, and they were like, no. Um, or they may leave something behind, and they were looking under the seat for something, where the seat was pushed back. Um, they could have just killed her, and then took her car to go get some clothes that she was wearing, and then parked it back in a panic, just trying to to get there as fast as they could. Because somebody could have showed up. Her mom could have showed up. Her, her family could have showed up. Her boyfriend could have showed up. Um, sadly, I don't think we're ever going to know what happened to Debbie. Um, unless someone gives a deathbed confession, which I hate saying. I hate that it comes to that. Um, also, all of her immediate family's died in recent years. There's no one else. Um, just random people on the internet that are, you know, perplexed about this case like I am. Um, so this, like I said, this was featured on an Unsolved Mysteries episode in 1990, and since there are people out there who still watch those, it may be something they Google and solve it. It could be one of those random one-offs that someone's going to come forward and say, you know what, I know what happened, this is it, here we go. I don't know. Um, and it's sad that someone's life was cut short for this strange reason that I feel like we're never going to get an explanation for. Yeah. Um, the meatloaf is done. The potatoes are done. So I'm going to, I'm going to check on those. Okay. The potatoes are not all the way done. I'm going to shake them and put them back in there for a couple more minutes just to kind of get them going. Um, and then we'll, we'll check back in a couple minutes. Okay. So I'm letting the potatoes finish, but look at it. Yes. I'm going to cut into it. The deliciousness. So let's do that. And I have to use them to get it out. But it smells amazing. Voila, it's done. I'll have the whole story, everything, up on my blog to go with this video. I'm gonna put some more ketchup on it. There's a little because it's who I am as a person. Okay. The turned out really delicious.